So you can't escape it. The news is everywhere and it's troubling. Omicron cases are increasing and record numbers of infections are being reported. Are we losing the battle? Well, today we're gonna to concentrate on the topic of testing and I'm pleased to welcome a regular guest, uh, Dr. Gavin McGregor Skinner, the Senior Director of GBAC. Hello, Gavin. Hi, Jeff. Good to see you. Thank you for giving up some of your time today. Let's talk about testing. I know you have um, some information to share with us. What are the circumstances that should prompt a person to test for COVID-19? Well, I wanted to start with, Jeff, with right now we're seeing across so many countries this let it rip mentality. Uh, it's my personal opinion. It's short-sighted. It's selfish. Now, everyone's heard the Omicron might be milder, but from an individual perspective, maybe that's a good thing. From a community perspective, not at all. So let's look at the number of essential workers that are needed for essential services that are sick and are not at work right now. The sheer numbers of people that have been infected makes it essential to have smart strategies for testing. So we're receiving a host of questions of when and how to test. We have two tests available right now. We have the at home or at work rapid antigen test. This is what the individual can do themselves. You get the results within 15 minutes. We also have these PCR tests. That's where you have to go get a swab taken in the nose and then it goes to a laboratory and it can take a few hours or a few days. So the, th the three main scenarios, Jeff, that I wanna focus on for COVID testing are as follows. The first scenario, when you feel sick and you have symptoms, including say a sore throat, a cough, a runny nose or fever, you can test. But, you, but everyone should now understand, if you feel sick for any reason with symptoms of an infectious disease, then stay away from other people. Even if it's not COVID, it could be another infectious disease. Stay away from people. You don't need to wait for the test results to make this decision. The second scenario, test when you have been exposed to COVID-19 whether you learned that via a contact tracing notification or you discovered that you've been close to you know, someone who has tested positive. Now, these rapid antigen tests aren't likely to detect the virus very early, but they are considered a really good gauge of whether you have become infectious. So if you have symptoms already, then you can test right away with the rapid test. If that rapid test is negative and you still have symptoms, then I would recommend a few days later, follow up with another rapid test or even a PCR test. Now, the third scenario, if you don't have symptoms after the exposure, then wait at least three days and then do the rapid test. Because if you're infected, your viral, the amount of virus in your body or the viral load will likely will have increased enough for the test to detect it after those three days. And in the meantime, take precautions. Stay away from people you don't know. Wear the mask, wash your hands, clean and disinfect surfaces, even if you are vaccinated. So Gavin, when you think about these tests you've mentioned, the, the PCR test, the rapid test, how are they really different? Is there more information on that? Well, yes, yes, there is, Jeff. And, and the point is, is that with these rapid tests are going to, they're, they're the big game changer. They're going to allow you to test whenever you want to be tested, if you can get access to them. And a lot of people have now have the rapid tests. Again, the PCR test is where you have to actually go out of your home to a facility and you get swapped by uh, a volunteer health worker or a nurse or, or some other person who's trained to take the swab. It goes to a laboratory. So it's really important. The PCR tests are really good at picking up the virus when it's incubating, picking up when you're either when you have the when you when you're contagious and have the virus, um, and, and also when when you're negative. The rapid tests are really good at determining um, if you're negative. They're not so good at determining whether you're positive. They still work, but they're not as sensitive as the PCR tests. And I want to just emphasize, Jeff, that. None of the COVID tests, either the rapid test or the PCR test that you get right now will tell you if you have a variant, such as the Delta or Omicron variants. Only a very small sample of those positive tests go to a special lab to determine a particular variant. So when you hear in the news that, say, for example, 75% of the cases in area are either Delta or Omicron variant, 
they're just an estimate. They are not real numbers. So it's really important that you, you stay with us at the ISSA GBAC team. Testing is all about science. It's all about learning more about what this virus is doing in the real world. And the GBAC team is going to keep focusing on this and provide this information and, up, and update it as it changes. Gavin, thinking about these statistics out there, they're, they're rising, they're alarming. And those are from laboratory tests. I believe there's a few home tests, the rapid tests, that have apps that might report your results. But overall, would you say that home tests that I can get from my library are not reported? Exactly, Jeff. So a lot of the testing we do at home does not get officially reported to the government. So those numbers might be higher than we think. Much higher. And again, what we're seeing right now, there's very high levels of COVID-19 virus in our communities. It's both Delta and Omicron. We're seeing significant absenteeism amongst essential workers that provide essential services. And that's another piece of critical data that shows just where this virus is spreading within our neighborhoods and our communities right now. 